high school, I was really lucky to go to a college that had a canoeing program. We had our own canoes, a river down the, down the road from the actual college itself. Ever since then, I've always wanted to be able to get a canoe and explore the inland waterways of Australia. Since starting this channel, I um, started looking into the idea again of once again getting in, getting a canoe and using a canoe to explore. Um, it fits in with my ethos of minimalist camping from the point of view that once again you're travelling fairly light. I don't know what you can fit in a canoe. So you're not taking the great big gazebos and 120 litre fridges and all that type of stuff. It's just fairly light camping still. So really um, appeals to me from that point of view. So over the last six months I've been investigating or looking at and reviewing the idea of different canoes and there's a lot of styles today. It's all changed from when I was a young guy. The, um, the most popular thing these days is the sit on top kayak style. Plastic ones that you can get out of China and, and America and other countries like that. And they're hugely popular. A few reasons for that. One, you sit on top of it, you're not into it. Um, they're fairly flat and stable and of course the price point. So a good quality um, fiberglass canoe used to cost you north of $2,000, $3,000. And for the average person on the street, they didn't want to spend that much money um, or invest that much money in a canoe. So um, it then sort of killed that part of the market. And in fact, here in Queensland, there was a guy called Roscoe, Roscoe Canoes. And he was hugely popular. Um, until the advent of these flat bottom canoes. I'm just going to turn around here. There's a couple of beautiful swans just coming out in the water here. So I'll turn around so you can see, guys can see that behind me. So yeah, unfortunately, um, good old Roscoe's now retired. He decided it was all too hard. Um, he made some very, very good canoes. Excellent canoes, in fact. And so since researching on YouTube and, and um, Google and the like, it's been very difficult to find another canoe maker. But as luck would have it, I came across on, on Facebook, in fact, a page for a, a company called uh, the One Tree Co Canoe Company, the One Tree Canoe Company, run by Dan and Sue. So I started looking at their website and, and, um, and their Instagram and so forth, and yeah, it, it really appealed to me. So Dan um, used to work for Roscoe many, 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 many years ago as a young guy, and he's decided to go out on his own now and design and make his own canoes. He's one of the very few that actually make fiberglass canoes, which is really what I wanted. Um, you can buy uh, the polyethylene canoes from companies like um, uh, Old Town Canoe, sorry, that's got organizations, and there's plenty of those around. And look, they're not too badly priced. Um, obviously, what they're going with the polyethylene is going for the lightweight, which is great. Um, my problem with polyethylene is two is one, you can't really repair it. So, I watched a, um, a young Canadian guy recently on a channel, and I'll put a link to his, to his uh, channel down in the description below. And he goes, he does massive 52 day, 83 day trips across Newfoundland off Quebec. And um, he has one of these um, polyethylene canoes. And at the front of the canoe on this trip, he actually started to wear the actual front curve of the actual canoe down to the point where it actually cracked and started leaking. And he pulled over and obviously and dried it off and tried to repair it as much as he could. But as he said, there's nothing he can do to repair that canoe. Now, I have heard of people um, dripping hot plastic onto these things, trying to fix them and that type of stuff. But if it's anything structural on the canoe, you simply can't repair them. And most of the manufacturers will tell you that. Um, they're pretty much unrepairable. Um, people talk about specific glues and patches. From what I've researched, um, they simply don't work. So, for me, I wanted a fiberglass canoe. Uh, the second thing issue with polyethylene and all these um, sit on top plastic kayaks and so forth is one day they'll all end up in landfill. They'll give you a 10 year warranty, which is essentially before that plastic starts to break down, which is why it's 10 years. So what I wanted was fiberglass. Fiberglass will last you 100 years if you look after it. Uh, no problem at all. But you can also patch it. So our young Canadian friend had a, had a, a um, a fiberglass canoe and he could have got his little fiberglass kit out and he could have repaired it on the bank and it would have been 100% watertight, beautiful and solid and structurally sound. So that was the other reason I looked at it. So 
So that end, I've now hired this canoe from Dan Sue. Came out this weekend to try this one to Lake Wyalong uh, here in the southeast Queensland. Well, Lake Wyalong's about an hour and a half out of Brisbane. Really easy drive out here. Beautiful lake. Um, and this one is owned or run by Southeast Queensland Water, which means it's, it's water as a catchment area for drinking water. So there are no powered boats allowed at all. Um, and the tracks around the actual lake itself are hiking tracks, um, mountain bike tracks, and horse riding tracks, which is fantastic. So that's why I've come here. It's, um, as you can see, it's absolutely pristine out here. Beautiful and quiet, not a breath of wind. The lake itself is like a mirror. Um, to test out this little canoe. So it's 11 foot Sprite um, and I have to say it's probably about the right size for me. I didn't want a big 14 footer dual seat thing. Um, it's just more weight, more canoe to push around and so forth and I just don't need that much room. So it's only ever going to be me in this canoe. So I wanted something light. Uh, this thing comes in at about 20 kilograms. This is a higher one so it's a little bit heavier. But the, higher, the ones you can buy are either 20 kilograms or 16 kilograms. 16 kilograms sorry in a light layup process that Dan can do as well so yeah so look very very impressed with this canoe um, really really great I'll show you when I get back to the bank a bit more of a look over it and the design of it and so forth very well it's constructed beautiful design um, interesting now in the evening it's now 20 past four and because the canoe's now empty it spins like a top in the water it's beautiful it's so easy to maneuver but anyway guys, just wanted to introduce you all back to the channel again for this week um, and I hope you love this video. Just brought in here for some lunch. Absolutely dead silent other than the sound of the birds. Just brilliant. There's a rule that says it's 100 metres for a camp spot to be away from a waterway. And uh, it's a great idea. It keeps the uh, contamination obviously away from, from the freshwater areas, which is fantastic. And when you look on a map, you sort of think to yourself, oh yeah, that looks pretty close. It's worth walking up to. So you bring your canoe and of course, with the canoe, you can carry a whole lot of great stuff, which is fantastic. It's one of the benefits of going canoeing. Then you just start walking up the hill and you start thinking to yourself, hang about. This is well past 100 metres. I've just gone past about five places where I could have camped. This better be an absolute cracking camp spot. And the further you get up, the more that goes through your mind. So anyway, that's what I found this today. So I've turned up to this camp spot. I'll turn the camera around and I, as you'll see, I think it was absolutely worth the hike up the hill. Have a look at this. This is an absolute masterpiece. What Southeast Queensland Water have done here, guys, is left the homestead that was up on the hill. Rather than just bulldozing it and leaving it as a big grassy knoll for people to camp on, you've still got plenty of grassy areas, and there's a couple of ladies camped on the other side of the house as well. But the house is actually empty. So what they've done is they've left all the windows covered in uh, bird wire and all the doors in bird wire. So you can actually camp inside, which is what I'll do tonight. I use putting a tent up if I don't have to. But absolutely brilliant. Full credit to the guys, they're extremely well. It does have running water, the water tank, and it also has a toilet, so absolutely impressed, I've got to say. Really worth the hike up the hill. to my haunted house. This is going to be a really interesting night's sleep. All the windows are open, there's no glass in the actual room itself, but uh, that's just fine. It's a really nice change. Um, just had a lovely dinner with the two ladies that are camping here as well. Always great to talk to other hikers and hear their stories and how they travel and what they like to do with their lives and where they're going with their traveling. One of them is just getting into hiking, which is fantastic. Uh, it's just interesting always talking of course equipment and gear and where she likes to go, where she wants to go and all that sort of stuff. So 
yeah, really, really enjoyable. Had a simple crank ski just cooked on the little stove. There's no campfires allowed here, unfortunately. But look, understandable with a big old house like this, it'd end up getting burnt down. So yeah, so just gonna head to bed now. It's about 8.30, just finishing my cup of tea and um, looking forward to seeing the sunrise in the morning. It's supposed to be a 30% chance of rain tomorrow. So yeah, looking to get up early. There's a little mountain up behind me here. And I'm gonna try and get up there in the morning and see if I can uh, get a bit of a view as the sun starts to come up. So looking forward to seeing that. And uh, I will chat to you further in the morning. Just the loveliest time of the day. Just on 7 a.m. now. I'll show you out to my left here. Not quite to the top yet of this mountain. It peaks up actually over the back of there. But how beautiful is this? Native wattles with all their flowers. Beautiful light this time of the day. Well worth getting out of bed for. Mount Joyce. Absolutely worth the hike. If you're in the area, definitely worth coming up here. It's a hard slog, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of false starts and false peaks if you like, but yeah, definitely worth doing the hike. Just absolutely stunning. I'll turn it around again just so you can see again what I'm looking at. I was really hoping to be able to show you the lake. There is a homestead just down the bottom of here and I'm not sure if that's the one where I'm camping or not. But unfortunately we can't see the lake, but it essentially goes out through these clouds here and right down through into there. So yeah, beautiful lake, but unfortunately we can't see it today. We'll probably have to come back in the afternoon. Just so lovely when you get to the top of a ridge line and the track continues on, you can see a lot of the grass trees here. There's these little guys down the bottom here. The taller ones over the back there. Just a beautiful hike. Really, really loving this. Well worth a slog, that's for sure. But, um, full credit once again to the guys at South East Queensland Water and the rangers they're in. They uh, looked after the track very, very well. It's in great condition, well marked, so there's no problem with getting lost or anything. Even at night time, the markers are reflectors, so you can actually pick them up in a head torch or a torch on your mobile phone. So yeah, very, very impressed, guys. Well done. So it's interesting is the, uh, the conversations you have in your head as you're walking up these sort of hikes about how tired you are or exhausted you are and out of shape you are and so forth. And uh, sometimes though things can really put things into perspective for you. I got about two thirds of the way up this hike and um, two guys came bolting down on mountain bikes. So there's some pretty steep sections here, a lot of steep sections in fact. And so these guys would have had to carry their bikes literally up the mountain just so they could ride them all the way back down again. So I'm thinking, well, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, they're a lot fitter than me, there's no doubt about that. So then I get to the top and I'm wheezing and puffing, sounding like I've had about 10 packets of cigarettes and uh, just starting to catch my breath. And a lady comes running up the track, would you believe? So she's one of these trail runners. So she's traveling super light, a little lightweight pack on her back with a hydration bladder, but she's actually running up the hill. So now I'm starting to think, my God, old man, you are seriously out of shape. So yeah, just really lends some perspective when you're sort of uh, beating yourself up for being unfit and so forth, or lamenting how hard the track is to then see people doing those sorts of things. And you think, well, time to get fitter. And I've got to tell you, that's exactly where I'm at at this point in time. Always the way, isn't it? As soon as you head off down the hill, the fog starts to lift. But have a look at that. I'm not sure if you can see it through the trees. Just beautiful. So 
this is what I absolutely love about canoes is you can get right up close to everything you like it's only drawing about two or three inches of water right up against all these little trees and so forth you can see up ahead there is a huge big nest in a tree that's a sea eagle's nest I've seen probably about a dozen since I've been here big fat sea eagles which is great to see you can see the cormorants here on the little branches here lots and lots of cormorant which is fantastic so nice to see all the bird life the motor sound you can hear in the background is actually light aircraft light aircraft cruising around the area having a look which is great but yeah this is just magical guys it's exactly why i want a canoe Unfortunately when I got back to the ramp there was about 150 people there, um, just day trippers who had come down to the lake to uh, spend the afternoon on a Sunday which is fine. So rather than doing it with all the background noise um, I thought I'd just do the wrap up of the video here at home in my backyard. Just wanted to take you guys through some of the things that I like about this canoe, some of the features that I really like and think are a great design um, point of view. And um, I'll just get the camera off the, uh, off the tripod now and I'll just show you some of those um, items. Okay, so one of the first things that I think is a great design is instead of having in the front plastic piece here just a, another cross member and then built into the plastic is where you tie onto the actual canoe itself, um, Dan's built in a, this um, aluminium rod across it which as you can see is bolted on the outside and on both sides. So what that gives you is a very good handle to hang on to. It's also structurally very strong because it's connected directly to the fiberglass of the canoe. So that's um, I think a really good design feature. It has exactly the same setup at the rear. The other thing he's done is built in flotation. So the flotation, I'm not sure if you can see it here, there's a bit of a ledge, but basically behind this little piece here is um, a, a big arrangement of foam. So they actually build in foam into this area here at the front and the back, which builds into flotation for the canoe to ensure that it never actually sinks on you, which is great. So look, generally speaking, um, a normal sort of canoe seat style, the actual cross members themselves, you can put those wherever you like. Um, he can then move it if, you, if you require it, but as you can see from the front here, or the middle I should say, there's plenty of room in here if you want to use the big barrel systems. I simply had a backpack up there and my esky in the middle here, and then a little bit of stuff at the back, but overall, very well thought out. Um, he's used a plastic extrusion on the, the sides of the actual canoe here, which gives it the nice rigidity and so forth, but also keeps down the weight. Um, and also st obviously stainless steel bolts used throughout. So overall, it's a very, very good design. Um, I'm not 100% at this point in time, so what I'm thinking I'll do is this weekend is take it out again, hire it again from him, and uh, take it back out, um, and just do a day trip this time, something a little bit lighter, just to get a feel for um, how it performs in a lighter weight and in different conditions. Um, and we'll, uh, I'll uh, give you my final verdict then.